Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep this short today. I know we have lots of praise reports. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to start reading this morning out of Luke 6. You don't have to turn there. You can just listen unless you want to. Uh, Luke 6, verse 46. This is in red, so we know Jesus is speaking. This is Jesus talking. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to meet me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on the rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck in the house, that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. Amen. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Now many of us have read that story numerous times, but what struck me when I read it this morning, we know this, but praise God he gives us revelation when we read over and over. What struck me the most powerful this morning was just the first verse, why do you call me Lord, Lord? and do not do what I say. How many times do you hear people ask, well, I prayed, nothing happened. I prayed, and God didn't answer. Are you doing what I say? Amen. Amen. The, the power in that have you opened up God's Word, and are you doing what God's Word says? Amen. Anything else in life, we tried to do that, and it wouldn't work. If we showed up at work, if you get hired for a new job, and they go in and they say, okay, I need you here at 7 o'clock every morning, and you get an hour lunch, and you leave at 4, and these are your duties. Okay, well that's wonderful. But what happens if you don't do them? What happens if you come in at 9 or 10, take a two or three hour lunch, leave when they want to, don't really want to do what's asked, how long are you going to keep that job? Probably not but a day or two. If you get married, promise to be faithful and true. You don't come home for a week at a time, out drinking, going to the bars, doing whatever. How strong is that marriage going to be and how long is it going to last? And we can even break it down of, I prayed for a new car, I got a brand new car. Well with that car there's a manual. Things to do and things not to do. If you don't ever put gas in it, if you don't put oil in it, check the air in the tires, how long is that car going to last? Now it sounds trivial that, well of course you know you have to put gas in the car and you know you have to put oil in it and you have to take care of it. But yet, with God's Word we seem to think, well I'll just do what I want. But I don't really want to do what God says. Hello. I want to call out. I want him to work kind of like the car. I want it to start every time I go out and put the key in the ignition. I want the car to start and take me from destination A to B. Right. So when I call, Lord, Lord, but this is Jesus talking. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So God expects us to read his word, to obey his word, yes. to walk in obedience, yes. 
And once again, we talk about this every week in this church. In order to be obedient, you have to know what God's Word says. You have to open God's Word, read it, and know what it says. Time and time and time again, and I'm sure this is in many of our lives, we try to talk to someone about God's Word, about the power of God, about the goodness of God, the sovereignty of God, but also the just God, until you get to that spot that they don't want to hear, that they don't like, that they don't agree with. Well, I don't believe that. Okay. Do you know what God's Word says about it? No, but. No, but. If you do not know what God's Word says, then how can you be obedient? Amen. I think of this on, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Just like the analogy of the car, you drive it and drive it and drive it. When the gas gauge comes on and says, hey, running out of gas, it's telling you what you need to do. And if you don't do it, then guess what? You'll run out of gas. The car will be of no use to you. None. God's telling us, Jesus is speaking, we have to obey his word. Deuteronomy 13.4 says, It is the Lord your God you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. Keep his commands and obey him. Once again, in order to follow God's commands, you must know what they are. That's right. You have to open up the word, child of God. You cannot be successful if you do not know what God's word is. Because how clever the enemy is. Follow it all the way back to the Garden of Eden. The enemy knows the word. The enemy knows the word more than most Christians, better than most Christians, just enough to turn it, to distort it, to twist it a little bit, to where it sounds good. And if you don't know God's word, oh yeah, that's what the Bible says. That's not what the Bible says. How many people do we hear, money is the root of all evil? How many of us has heard that? Money is the root of all evil, and that is not what the word says. The love of money. Amen. The love of money. Putting the love of money, putting that above God. Nothing wrong with money. The love of it, when you put it above our Lord, Amen. is a root of evil. John 8.31 To the Jesus that believed, I'm sorry, to the Jews that believed him, Jesus said, if you hold on to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So Jesus is saying, you are my disciples when you hold on to my teachings. How many times do we hear over and over well, I believe in God. So does the devil. So does the demons. They believe in God. See, child of God, when you're talking to someone, you have to take it farther. Don't just stop at that, well, yeah, I believe in God. That means nothing. Because the devil believes. Amen. The demons believe. What do you believe? See, so often you get into that when you start talking about God's word, when you start talking about God, you get in that territory that 
you don't want to go too far in. You take up, you want to test the waters. Well, I believe in God. And they stop there. Okay, what do you believe? What do you believe? Believe in Jesus? Well, I believe Oprah. How many years ago did she say this? This was in the 80s. All paths leave to heaven. No, that's a lie. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is, not Buddha, not Allah, not Mother Earth, not all of the other lies out there of the enemy. Jesus Amen. is the way, the truth, Amen. the life. Thank no you. man comes to the Father except through him. Hallelujah. I say this to remind everyone you have to know what God's Word says. And over and over, we find out that people really don't want to know. They don't want to go to church. They don't want to read God's Word. Their opinion is what they believe. And I know I've talked about it in here because the Holy Spirit gave me this one day and it was it was terribly powerful for me and it says yeah your opinion is an idol wow. and that struck me because how many people do we know ourselves included well my opinion is it's an idol because if you put your opinion above God's word you in error you're in error and that is an idol you have just made your opinion an idol Amen. so when you hear these people because I used to be one of them. Praise God, he's opening my eyes. Says, well, yes, I believe God. I believe in Jesus. But I believe, I believe. Does it line up with God's word? Because when that comes out of our mouths, I believe. I believe this. Or a but. A yeah, but. We've talked about that in here. Yeah, but. Um, well, I believe the Bible and I believe this. But. But, you know, that was written 2,000 years ago. Oh, That's not relevant for today. Oh, We're in the world. We are not of it. Be careful, child of God, trying to be relevant. I say this only to say we have to read God's Word. You have to know what God's Word says. And guess what? It's up to you when you hear any man or woman behind the pulpit and you hear any man or woman tell you something, the Bible says it's up to you to check it. Yes. We are responsible. Be careful. Believe in every single thing. You turn on the radio, you turn on the television, a co-worker. You may not go to church, but you know a co-worker that does. My people perish for lack of knowledge. That means you have to open up God's Word. You have to read. You will be accountable, child of God. You will be accountable, world. We will not be able to stand in front of God and say, Well, pastor told me. Well, Aunt Mimi told me. Well, Grandpa, Grandpa went to church. He's a good man. And he told me this. And you never once opened up God's word. You never once. That's, I'm not even talking about a relationship with our Lord. That's a whole different teaching. I'm talking about just knowing what God's word says. The enemy is very, very clever in how he can twi twist God's word. So with that... We are responsible. We are responsible to read God's word, to know God's word. Yes. And at that point, then you can start defending God's word. Show yourself studied and approved. That means you have to desire God. You have to desire God's word. And you have to take time and put God first. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.